Hi and welcome to Dr. Mix. Today, compression, one of the most discussed subjects, one of the most misunderstood subjects, and I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can. Compression basics. Compression is the act of reducing the level of the sound whenever that sound reaches a certain level. For example, if the vocals go over a certain amount of volume on the meter, then the compressor will turn it down. Now, how fast it does it or how much depends on the setting. I just want to make sure that everyone understands this much. Reducing the level when the level is too high has various advantages. One of them is that I can raise the overall level louder so that the quieter parts of the sound can be heard better than before. Leveling, essentially. And typically it's applied to vocals to make sure that the words can be understood. But it generally applies to all of the instruments where you need a little bit of consistency between the loud parts and the quiet parts. The attack is how fast the compressor reacts to it. So how much time it'll pass before the compressor starts pushing down the sound. This will determine how snappy the sound of the compressor is. The release time is how long it'll take for the compressor to go back to the normal level, untouched level. The other parameter is the ratio. That means how much is actually the compressor pushing down the sound. A compression of 2 to 1 will mean that anything that goes above 2 dBs over the threshold is going to be pushed by 1 dB. 4 to 1, if it goes over by 4 dBs, is going to be pushed down. You know how this works. Compressing for enhancement. Now, compression is not just to control the levels, it's also to enhance the sound. Different compressors have different sounds. Choosing one over the other means that you decide for a certain tone character. One way of looking at it is how transparent a compressor is. When you hear this word, transparent, that means how clean the sound is. So compressors like the Mazalek, for example, or the GML, those are famous for being very, very clean. It means that the compression is introduced, but it doesn't change the sound. And you might want to be as transparent as possible when it comes to classical music, acoustic guitar, strings, and piano. You want to make sure that the compression is there, but I can barely hear it. And that's when a transparent compressor is very good to have. Then there are compressors that are more colorful. The 1176, the LA-2A, some of the tube compressors, especially when driven hot. What they do is they introduce distortion. But distortion is good. Distortion means character, means higher harmonics that start firing off as the sound comes in. So that conveys a little bit more character. What compressor to use? Huh, this is where the fun begins. We have pretty good compressors, hardware. Using hardware and using plugins is just a little bit different. How is it different? I feel that the hardware gets to the sound straight away, whilst with the plugin, you have to work a little bit harder, try different things. This is my experience. Plus, real hardware makes me work differently. It has an effect on how I feel about the sound. And also, expensive boutique compressors sound really good. Can the plugins imitate that sound? Maybe, or maybe not. Let me show you what we have. Let's start with the bread and butter. These are possibly the compressors that we use the most. They are very flexible. These are analog compressors, but they have digital control. Usually we like to use them as 1176 emulations. They're very fast if you want. They're very slow if you want. These two compressors are the Swiss army knife of compressors. They're good for pretty much anything you can think of. We like to use them on vocals, on uh, bass, on drums, on snares. Uh, they sound really good on snares. This is actually a channel strip, but it's got really nice compression settings. It's very basic. You hear the side, the amount of compression, the attack, and uh, the release. Very warm, very effective, very simple to control. The Neve is really good for program material and for 
strings, pads, pianos. What the Neve is good at is managing sounds that are rich in harmonics. Like, you know, when you play a long note on a piano, you have all those beautiful harmonics firing off, and sometimes other compressors get a little bit confused. The Neve never does. The Neve sounds really buttery, warm, kind, gentle. It doesn't have any attack control, but it has a very effective way of operating. I wouldn't say that it is completely transparent, but it behaves in a transparent way, but yet delivering a little bit of beauty to the sound. This is a typical tube tech kind of compression. It's quite warm, quite compact, quite well behaved, works great on vocals, works great on bass, keyboards, acoustic music. This is a very good all-rounder. I really like this section here. This is the Phoenix Mastering Plus. It's a Thermionic Culture unit. This is a proper boutique compressor and it's one of my favorites ever. It's got several controls. You, you have your gain, which has an incredible sound on its own. And then you have your attack. Notice that every control here is a switch because you need to be recalling settings for mastering. Here you got your release. I tend to use it all the way up all the time, so very slow attack and very fast release. The way you use this unit is by just kissing the needle. You don't want this unit to work too hard. You can if you want, for a fact, for example, on drums. But if you're using it on program material, you just want to compress 1 dB, 2 dBs at the most, and that's when this machine sounds best. So it delivers a really credible, full sound. The low end becomes nice, warm, compact, expensive. I wouldn't use this for um, vocals, but I could definitely use it for strings, I could definitely use it for orchestra, and definitely on any program material that requires a bit more in the low end and a bit more in the texture. The SSL is probably one of the most used compressors on the planet. It's got a threshold control, it's got a, your attack. We tend to use this either on 10 or 30. You don't really need to go too fast, especially because this is a mixing compressor. This is what you put on your master bus chain possibly as a first step in your master bus chain. Then you have your compression ratio. We tend to use it at a four to one. This we find that is the most uh, useful setting. And then you have the release. If you have a slow song, you will probably go towards uh, one second point two. Otherwise, generally for fast and medium fast tracks, you wanna go between three and six. I hardly use an on one at all. And this is the makeup gain. So basically once you have compressed it, you can make up and uh, drive the next element in the mastering chain to the correct level. This unit sounds punchy, snappy, present, aggressive. This is probably one of the most colorful compressors that we have and most of the rock and roll music that you heard in the past 30 years is probably been through this compressor. So I think this is a lot of information for today. We talk about it extensively in our blog at drmix.com forward slash blog. You just use the search bar and you can go compression or EQ or whatever and you will find tons of information. Also, you can check out the official guide to mixing where we show these techniques being applied. You can find the link in the description here, there and everywhere. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and visit us on drmix.com. See ya.